Hey folks, today we're going to talk about classical orthogonal polynomials. These are actually three special families of orthogonal polynomials, which includes some of the stars of the show that you might have seen before. Specifically, we have the Hermit polynomials, the Laguerre polynomials, and the Jacobi polynomials. These latter two families of polynomials have parameters which specify the particular kind of polynomial that you want. The last one, the Jacobi polynomials, includes a special subclass of what are called Jagenbauer polynomials, which, as special cases, include the Laguerre polynomials that we talked sorry, excuse me, Legendre polynomials that we talked about last time, as well as other important classes such as Chebyshev polynomials. So our goal for today is to talk about each of these families of polynomials, give it a little bit of an origin story, where it's coming from and explain some of its properties. We'll start out with the Hermit polynomials. These are polynomials which are orthogonal with respect to a Gaussian type weight on the real line. And they arise quite naturally from studying the energy eigenstates of a quantum harmonic oscillator. To be really specific here, the Hermit polynomials are the sequence of orthogonal polynomials with the first one being H0, which is just the constant function one. We have H1, which is going to be 2x, h2, which is going to be 4x squared minus 2, h3, which is going to be 8x cubed minus 12x, and so on and so forth, with the specific recursion that the n plus 1 Hermit polynomial is 2x times the nth Hermit polynomial minus 2 times n times the n minus 1 Hermit polynomial. So we can use this relationship to get whatever degree Hermit polynomial we want. This kind of relation is something that happens anytime we have a sequence of orthogonal polynomials, and it's called a recurrence relation. Now, like all orthogonal polynomials, they need to be orthogonal with respect to some sort of dot product, inner product, defined by some weight function. For the Hermit polynomials specifically, they satisfy the orthogonality condition that the integral from minus infinity to infinity of hm of x times hn of x times e to the minus x squared, that's a Gaussian function there, is going to be 0 as long as m is not equal to n. So that's that pairwise orthogonality. When m is equal to n, the value of the integral is positive and is equal to the square root of pi times 2 to the power of n times n factorial. The Hermit polynomials show up very naturally in differential equations, specifically in the context of a quantum harmonic oscillator. While that sounds kind of complicated, it's sort of just a quantum analog of like a mass spring system. Now one of the key players in quantum mechanics is the Schrodinger equation which describes the evolution of a wave function over time. For the quantum harmonic oscillator, Schrodinger's equation is negative h bar squared over 2m times the second derivative of the wave function psi plus 1 half m omega squared x squared psi equals e psi. Now here, h bar is the Planck constant, m is our mass of our quantum particle, omega is our angular frequency, and e is our wave function's energy. Now for our wave function to actually be a physical solution, we need to be looking for square integrable solutions of this differential equation. This gives us immediately one of the sort of the tenets of quantum mechanics is that those energy levels are going to vary discreetly rather than continuously. So we end up with actually a sequence of solutions, one for every integer n, or rather every positive integer n, uh, not negative integer n. And the nth wave function is given by this expression here, where we see prominently featured our Hermit polynomial. Next, we'll look at the Laguerre polynomials. These are polynomials which are going to be orthogonal with respect to an exponential function. Like the Hermit polynomials, they also arise, arise in quantum mechanics specifically in the context of the hydrogen lab. 
Again, we'll be really specific here about what these polynomials are. It's going to be a sequence of orthogonal polynomials, the first one being 1, just like for the Hermite polynomials, the second being 1 minus x, the third being 1 half x squared minus 2x plus 1, the fourth one L3 being negative 1 6 x cubed plus 3 halves x squared minus 3x plus 1, and so on and so forth, with yet another recursion formula, this one saying that the n plus 1 Laguerre polynomial is equal to 2n plus 1 minus x times the nth Laguerre polynomial minus n times the n minus 1th Laguerre polynomial divided by n plus 1. So just like with the Hermite polynomials, we have a recurrence relation that allows us to calculate whatever Laguerre polynomial I want, starting with the first two and just following the formula to get the next one and the next one. Now the orthogonality condition that these guys satisfy is that the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x times lm of x times ln of x is equal to 0 if m is not equal to n. If m is equal to n, we instead get 1. The Laguerre polynomials that I've defined here uh, can be generalized to a much larger family, which are oftentimes also called the Laguerre polynomials, or the generalized Laguerre polynomials. These are given by L0 being 1, L1 being negative x plus alpha plus 1, and more generally the n plus 1th generalized Laguerre polynomial being 2k plus 1 plus alpha minus x times the kth polynomial minus k plus alpha times the k minus 1th polynomial over k plus 1. Now here alpha is just some parameter giving us some additional flexibility in the family of orthogonal polynomials that we found. The orthogonality relation for the generalized Laguerre polynomials involves a polynomial times an exponential function. It says that the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the alpha times e to the minus x times the nth polynomial times the nth polynomial is equal to 0 for m is not, not equal to n. When m is equal to n, the value of the integral is equal to the gamma function evaluated at n plus alpha plus 1 over n factorial. Now as promised, these are connected to the hydrogen atom. This time, we have to think about a three-dimensional quantum system. And we're going to use for, because of the symmetry of the hydrogen atom, I can center that hydrogen atom at the origin and use very naturally spherical coordinates. So my Schrodinger equation in spherical coordinates is this rather complicated looking partial differential equation here, where again h bar is the Planck constant, mu is the reduced mass, e is the electron charge, and epsilon naught is the vacuum permittivity. My spherical coordinates here are the r and theta and phi. Now as I said, this equation looks quite a bit intimidating, but if you stare at it for a minute, you'll realize that this is a separable partial differential equation, so the solutions can be found very quickly. And specifically, we again have discretely many solutions given by choosing three different non-negative integers, n, l, and m, and evaluating these expressions here. Notice that we have our Laguerre polynomial showing up, as well as these new interesting players, which are called spherical harmonics. which are very, very interesting functions in their own right. So that's a pretty good introduction to our Laguerre polynomials and our generalized Laguerre polynomials, which hereafter we'll probably just refer to as Laguerre polynomials. To finish things off, let's talk about Jacobi polynomials. These are orthogonal polynomials with respect to the Jacobi weight, 1 minus x to the power of a times 1 plus x to the power of b, which is specifically a weight supported on the interval from minus 1 to 1. They're strongly related to hypergeometric functions, and they arise very naturally in the context of representation theory. Now, like the generalized Laguerre polynomials, Jacobi polynomials are going to depend on extra parameters, this time two parameters, the a and the b that we see in the weight above. So to be very uh, explicit about this, the degree 0 Jacobi polynomial is going to be 1. The degree 1 polynomial is going to be a plus 1 plus 
a plus b plus 2 over 2 times the quantity x minus 1. And more generally, the nth Jacobi polynomial is given by this recursion relation here, which you do not need to memorize. <laughs> the Jacobi polynomial satisfy the orthogonality condition that the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 1 minus x to the power of a times 1 plus x to the power of b times the nth polynomial times the nth polynomial is equal to 0 if m is not equal to n, and otherwise is equal to a fairly complicated expression involving some gamma functions. Now, while the Jacobi polynomials look really complicated and intimidating, one of the main things we want to remember about them is that they're out there, right? Um, moreover, some special cases of the Jacobi polynomials are really very important. For example, if I take a and b to both be 0, then I get my Legendre polynomials that we talked about during the last video. Another really interesting case is when I take a and b to both be minus 1 half. The Jacobi polynomials that I get with these particular parameters I'll call tn for p to the negative 1 half, negative 1 half, n. And they're orthogonal with respect to the weight function defined by 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. This is a really special family of polynomials called the Chebyshev polynomials. Or if I want to be really careful, Chebyshev polynomials of the first kind. They're really interesting because they sort of generalize a formula that you can probably remember from way back from Calc 1, which is the double angle formula for sine and cosine. Specifically, remember that uh, cosine of x squared is 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2x. The interesting thing here is that that can be generalized to higher powers of cosine. For example, cosine of x cubed is going to be equal to 3 fourths cosine of x plus 1 fourth cosine of 3x. And all of these are specific special cases of something involving the Taylor polynomial, or sorry, the, the Chebyshev polynomials themselves. Indeed, the general formula is that the cosine of n times x is equal to the nth Taylor polynomial evaluated at cosine of x. So that's all just to give you a brief idea about Jacobi polynomials and some of the special families related to them. So just as a quick recap, we talked about three special families of orthogonal polynomials. The Hermit polynomials, the Laguerre polynomials, and the Jacobi polynomials. We also observed that polynomials have recurrence relations, at least in the cases of the classical orthogonal polynomials that we've talked about. It turns out that that's going to be true for any set of orthogonal polynomials that we want. And we also found that orthogonal polynomials arise naturally, especially in the context of ordinary or partial differential equations. So that's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.